Welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Christine Springer and today I want to talk about free houses and foreclosure defense. So I recently got a call from someone who'd been installed foreclosure proceedings for about 10 years. Now what I'm what I'm about to say in this video is that um, it's not I'm not judging these people. I went through something similar myself after subprime crashed but this person has been in foreclosure on and off for about 10 years and I'm guessing they don't have the money to pay the loan because the person who owned the home had someone else call me on their behalf and so basically the person in the property had heard I'm saying that with air quotes that if they got a securitization audit they could just go to court show it show the report to the judge and because there'd be fraud they'd get their house for free so I you know I don't want to spend the next several years taking calls from people who have this mistaken belief because they got it from somebody on the internet. Um, I'm not going to name any names. There are some people who I think do know what they're talking about and people that talk about the theory versus how it actually plays out in court. And there's some people that are well-meaning and they just don't know what they're doing. I'm specifically talking about this quiet title idea and, you know, this idea that, you know, the, the whole free house idea, it, it's a huge waste of time. It's a waste of my time as a service provider. It's a waste of time for you as a homeowner. There are no free houses in foreclosure defense. No free houses, no free houses, no free houses in foreclosure defense. So... There are multiple reasons why this is not going to happen. And the first one is that securitization of loans is not illegal. There's no law that says they can't bundle debt and sell it off to investors. In fact, securitization of debt has been around for a while. There are a bunch of debt types that are securitized, commercial real estate, car loans, student loans. This just allows banks to free up their balance sheet and make more loans. Now, securitiz securitizing residential mortgages is a newer process. There are a lot more of them than there are other types of debt, and the multiple transfers makes for a lot of paperwork. The process is absolutely sloppy. So errors, again, errors and mistakes in air quotes, because I don't really think that there are errors and mistakes. I just think they're sloppy and lazy. But these errors in the paperwork means that there's details overlooked and this is where the homeowner in foreclosure can get most of their leverage. The second reason is equity, also known as fairness. Now the legal principle of equity is generally understood by laypersons as fairness. And this principle is about not allowing people to take unfair advantage of situations. Equity is about what is morally right or fair. And so what this means is the law is not going to allow you a free house just because the bank screwed up. Whether they did it or not, you still borrowed money and wiping out your debt is not fair. I should say wiping out your debt and stripping the title, the lien off is not fair to the person or entity you borrowed the money from. The third reason, the banks are a powerful lobby. So many government officials come from banks or want to get a job with a bank after they're out of office. Government and the banks are enmeshed and therefore the banks have a lot of favor with the government and in the court systems. Another reason, the case law has swung very far to the right in favor of corporations. So I'm talking about Citizens United and this idea that corporations have rights. And this makes it much harder for Joe Average to persuade a judge to wipe off a lien. So a judge may stop a foreclosure from proceeding, but they're most likely not going to wipe out the lien on the house. This is because the door is still open for the correct party to come forward and foreclose on the property. The next reason is called the rule of law. Now this is fundamental to a strong economy. It promotes fairness and equality, ensures that everyone from individuals to institutions are subject to the same laws and regulations. Now, again, we just talked about Citizens United and it's not totally fair, but we're just talking conceptually here. The rule of law creates a stable and predictable environment that allows individuals and businesses to plan and operate with confidence. So if you think about 
other countries that are developing that don't have a rule of law, they don't have a stable economy, and nobody wants to invest there because of the corruption and the fact that their whole investment might be taken by the government, they might have to bribe people, they might lose their whole investment. And that's why the United States is has the powerhouse economy that it does, is because we have the rule of law. Now, some other problems related to this free house belief include um, when you make this argument, lawyers and judges are not going to take you seriously. I'm, I would just say don't bother making this argument as a pro se. You'll be met with scorn and the judge is going to be pissed at you and they're going to think you're wasting his or her time. This argument that your loan was securitized and therefore fraudulent has been tried many times before, was probably unsuccessful, and you're just going to look like an idiot. Second, if you do manage to stop the foreclosure because of some securitization argument, you could wind up in limbo. So remember, two parts to a loan, the note and the deed or the mortgage, depending on the state you're in. So even if you do manage to convince the, a judge that there's fraud and the party foreclosing is not the proper party, the judge may only stop them from foreclosing on you, but they're not going to wipe the lien out, or which is called quiet title. And another thing, you could be in limbo for a long, long, long time. Over the long term, if a bank can't figure out how to foreclose, it leaves the process in limbo. This is not a good place to be unless you like living with uncertainty. Uncertainty creates a lot of stress and we all know that stress takes its toll. In the short term, stopping foreclosure is going to take the pressure off of the homeowner, but this is not a good place to get stuck. It's important that you work to get back on your feet and get out of default. The other problem is you still have taxes, insurance, HOA dues, maintenance, upkeep, and things like that. And if you can't afford your house payment, how are you going to keep the house in good condition? This is a legitimate question. You may also still be on the hook for HOA dues, property taxes, insurance, and in some cases the bank may continue to pay these and you go further into debt. Another thing, you come across as entitled and if you can't pay your bills, bankruptcy court is probably a good place for you. But if you're not prepared to go that route, expecting the court to wipe out your lien makes you look like a jerk. This does not help your case. Now, what is the solution to all of this? The solution is get out of default ASAP. Now, we are not in the Great Recession anymore, and there are not the job market is still strong and look we could debate that and you know the inflation and you know blah 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 but the point is is that there aren't as many obstacles to people dealing with their foreclosure problems we had unprecedented government assistance for um, foreclosure moratoriums people that couldn't make their house payment could get you know a forbearance they're they're just really isn't any reason for anybody to stay stuck. So if you manage to fight off foreclosure for any reason, don't just sit there and stay in limbo. Get get up and do something about the problem. Figure out what you want to do and go and take the steps to make it happen. If you need to do a BK, then do it. If you need help with strategy, talk to somebody about it consult with an attorney, but don't sit in your home for a decade broke and stuck in a victim mindset while your house starts falling apart around you. Be proactive and get out of default. Sell the house, work with the bank, do something about it. If you want to keep the house, you're going to have to figure out how to improve your financial situation. Again, talk to a lawyer and get a plan together. And so I don't, you know, there are I, I am monitoring some of the other things that I'm seeing out there. Like I recently saw that there is somebody, again, I'm not going to name any names, who is selling a packet of forms and there's some other guy that just looks like a lunatic to me with some of his ideas. And, um, I, you know, I don't know if these people have any legal experience, but these concepts, they're good. Con a lot of people have good concepts and good ideas, but these ideas, the biggest, the biggest thing I see happening 
is this idea of equity and fairness. It's not fair for you to get a free house. Whether, you know, and I, I wish it doesn't matter whether I agree with it or not, but because it's not going to happen, I, it's out of my hands. And so I don't have a magic audit or I can't wave a magic wand. And so I really just want people to not waste their time with this argument about, you know, a free house and fraud. I really don't want anybody to even call me and ask me about getting a free house because it's it's a waste of time. That's how passionate I am and how much I want to warn everyone about this argument about fraud and free houses and securitization and securitization audits. It's a complete waste of time, yours and mine. So I say this with love. I'm not judging anybody about it, but please people, don't waste your time making this kind of an argument. Don't call a lawyer, tell them this. I mean, I would never, ever, ever go to one of my lawyers and ask them, hey, um, I have a referral for you and they think they can get a free house because my lawyers would never take me seriously again. So thanks for liking, watching, sharing, subscribing. You can email me, Christine at Desert Edge Legal. Hopefully it's not hate mail, but I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do this again after the last recession just not going to spend all this time on the phone with people who think that they should they're going to get a free house because they hire me there may be people out there who make those kind of promises but you guys got to be careful about people making these kind of promises they just there's a federal trade commission rule there's unauthorized practice of law statutes people you know be careful be careful out there if you're trying to save your home again christine here thanks for liking watching sharing subscribing Thanks for listening and I'll catch you in the next video.